Hello, guys. Welcome to the show. Here we are once again. Uh, I haven't seen you guys for a while. Now, some people are like, Shane, you got a problem with me? You guys, through the internet, you were like, you got a problem with me. You're not streaming, Shane. There is something between us. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I've done to you to offend. I don't know. But here I am. We miss you, Shane. Norn Rad the second. Yanzi is uh, yelling at him from 30 days away. What? How's that possible? It's like that's like time travel or something, right? All right. So I have a big belly full of barbecue. And I was like, that that stream power right there. That 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 fucking saw sticking to my ribs. I got to stream. Got to get out there. Got to tell people. About the word of CG, let me get uh, situated here. Haven't streamed in a while, as you can see. Camera's all fucked up. I'm, look, look, I got my beautiful Freak Miller Sin City set. Uh, some got damaged in my move. I actually have, like, a lot of space. People go, Shane, you set up the same fucking way. You don't even look like you move. Look at this. Look at this. Little Shane back here. Look at it. Look, look, at, look, look, look. Hey. Hey. I'm, I'm like... I want barbecue. Now people are thinking barbecue. I'm thinking about uh, getting fat again. No. Got to think about, got to count calories when you're a clone and your organs are being harvested. Calories, every calorie counts. All right. Been working hard. Been working hard on Inglorious Rex pages, just man manifesting on my table. I'm like, oh my god, I finished one page, got to get to another. Um, the book is coming along now. Is it coming along as as quick as I would like? Absolutely not. Is it the best fucking book I've made? Absolutely, it is. Absolutely, Inglorious Rex. The most beautiful of Shane Davis's books. I have people like Mandy Summers, like, oh my God. That's why she says, I, oh Lord, I've been buying some Shane Davis. And, and I'm like, yeah, you know, Shane Davis comic's pretty good. I ain't got no Inglorious Rex, though. Glorious Rex, that's that's where it's at. That's the money. Every comic I've ever drawn, every pencil I've ever sharpened is for this one beautiful book. The book of the hour, the book that I've got, the fucking Clash of the Titan, all right? Uh, and I, I did say Titan, not Titans anymore, because uh, $259,716. The Glorious Rex getting ready to hit $260. Now, we are doing an update at the first of the month, and this update is going to be a very important update, as I will show a, uh, a kind of a, a collage of the progress of the book. Now, what you will see is you will see a grid. Let me get back on me for a second. You will see a grid. And on that grid, you will see a bunch of boxes. And on those boxes, you will start seeing you will start seeing uh, the pages that are done at what stage and what stage. And what's just completely empty. You're like, Shane, I see blanks. You missed a spot. 
Shane, over here, you missed a spot. Don't see anything. And I'll be like, that's because I haven't done those pages yet. Very important. Very important thing to know. Um, the mail, look, I didn't say this. I never, I never would say this. Never would, never would I say that. Look, look at this. Talking and drawing with shaved Danis, almost as good as Gollum to like up. I'm not going around saying this is the best comic book ever. That's not for me to decide. That's for you guys. What I am saying is this is the best Shane Davis book ever. I can control that because I'm putting everything into it. All the all the marbles are in this one book. And I'll tell you why. Very important. Because comics are dying. I've thought long and hard. The news of uh, the great, great Neil Adams has been, has been sitting with me. For people who know, Neil Adams passed away. Now, this this has uh, struck me, hit me, rocked me to my core. It's like, what what are we going to do without Neil Adams? And uh, I, 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 I quit thinking about it. I'll tell you why. Because I'm not looking forward to any Neil Adams project right now. And there's nothing out there. But Neil Adams did mean a lot to the American comic book industry. A lot of Dale Keown brought this up last night on Ballers. He's like, we got to talk about Neil for a second. Here comes Eric Huffles. Comics aren't dying. They have just moved to manga and Comicsgate. We're going to talk about that a little bit in this stream. I have some stuff pulled up for you, Eric Huffles. But I do want to I do want to talk about Neil first because this got me looking back at everything. And and the sad truth is is well first the sad truth is Neil Adams is no longer here. The other sad truth is uh, the best comics in the American comic book industry. And I'm talking about the main, the main two, Marvel and DC. Those days are behind us, okay? And, and everybody, we're laying around, we're kicking, we're crying, we're screaming. It's like, where is my good Batman comic? I, I need Batman punching Joker. No, 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 no. You're not getting that. You're going to get, you know... You're going to get trans Gotham. You're going to get, um, you know, we're going to talk about the LG. We're going to talk about the community. We're going to do things like that. And we're going to charge you for it. We're going to lecture you and give you an update like it's a, a cell phone update or something. And we're going to charge you like $4.99 for it. And, and in the disguise, it's going to be shrink wrap. Okay. When you have shit candy, you know what you got to do? You got to work on that wrapper. So they're going to take Batman, they're going to take your Superman, they're going to take your Spider-Man, and they're going to take a big fucking dump in it, okay? And they're just going to wrap it up top and sell it to you. And you're going to peel open this Superman book or this Batman book, and you're going to be like, look at this beautiful cover, and there's nothing but pure diarrhea in between the pages. Pure fucking diarrhea. And you're like, I paid $4.99 for this. Ah, shit, I got the wrong fucking thing. You can't get a return on no comic. That's how they get you. You can't go up to your comic guy and try to sell that shit back. Back in the day, you could. Back in the day, you could take an old comic and go and get store credit. Why? Because that shit was going up in value. Now, they're laughing at you. That They see you coming back in with your comics that you just left the store with, and you got they see that shit up under your hand. They lock the door, turn the open sign to close, cut the lights out. They're hiding up under the counter. They're not taking this shit back. They're not giving you no store credit. This stuff is like bread. It's going old. They got to get rid of it. They, there is no value to this stuff. Okay, so Neil Adams passing. I have some stories. Uh, everybody has Neil Adams stories. If you were around the convention circuit, it was a bit of a shit stir. One true story, though. I said Kyle Rayner's gay, and he laughed. And he gave me a fist bump. And Eddie Braganza on stage looked like he wanted to uh, fall over dead. This was a Green Lantern anniversary uh, panel. We all happened to be at the same convention, worked on Green Lantern historically. More so, Neil. I don't even know why I was there. I was just, this is a barbecue spiral. Eric Huffles for the win. This is, I got fucking sugar and cinnamon and pork running through my veins right now. I got to do something with it. I mean, what am I going to do? It's either this or bend Yonzi up into a pretzel. I don't know. I don't know. 
So Kyle Rayner's gay, me and Neil Adams fist bumping on stage. The crowd roars. They're like, yeah, Kyle Rayner is gay. Fuck that guy. Fuck me some Kyle Rayner. And uh, later, Neil told a story, a very important story, that I know you guys weren't there to hear, and I'm here to let you know this story. Because I'm sure Neil Adams would want stories, great stories of this, of this, of this beautiful comic book artist spread wild. He said, the greatest thing in his career, quote, I'm pretty sure nobody, this panel, even though it's recorded, it's never been on air because we were laughing that Kyle Rayner's gay. So I got to tell you this story. He goes, the greatest moment in his career was opening up a letter from President Richard Nixon. And I said, what? Come again. You know, it wasn't making Rachel Ghoul. It wasn't drawing Batman. It wasn't, you know, making John Stewart. None of that. He's like, no, not none of that. None of that mattered. Everybody's voting for uh, pretzel instead of this rant. I just want to let everybody know. He goes, President Nixon wrote me a letter in utter disgust because I drew Speedy on the cover shooting dope, bringing awareness of a drug epidemic in America. Famous cover by Neil Adams. And I was like, huh. He's like, yeah, Richard Nixon was just disgusted that made it onto a comic book and uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. But he was just gleeful that he, he did some sort of social commentary in a comic book and it hit. It, it, you know, reality, the real world reflected into a comic. And, and uh, but here's the thing. It was still a good comic. Today, SJWs, SJWs, they make comic books and they try to say, oh, what's relevant today? Let's put it in a comic book. But see, Neil, they were doing this every issue. They, every now and then they would do it. But, you know, they had action and adventure beautiful neil neil said there's nothing better and i believe this i believe this with my with my fucking heart with my fucking potato fucking heart i believe this neil adams said you take the best comic book writer you take the best comic book artist you slam those two together you have the best form of entertainment ever i believe it i believe it to this day i absolutely fucking 110 percent believe it 100 100 200 percent believe it Fuck it. That's not even possible. You're like, Shane, you're doing percentages, motherfucker. You can't be 200%. Neil Adams, 200% believe that. I 200% believe that. I'll tell you why. Because a comic is an interactive medium of art, word balloons, that a person reads and processes and put together, and you fill in the blanks between the, the gutters. That's it. Every little moment you don't see your brain interacting, it's the best form of entertainment that's man has ever made or will make i'm gonna i'm gonna rest my life in saying that neil already did god bless him i'm gonna put my life on the line here and i'm gonna say comic books is the elite form of entertainment and that's the fucking crime right it's the elite form of entertainment that interacts with the viewer with the reader and yet it's being crippled, driven down to its knees by SJWs trying to just pump in some real life shit. But guess what? The real life sucks. The real life sucks. Let's let's uh, make everybody try to play catch up on the English language. Let's make pronouns. Let's let's do the pronoun game. Let's let's and, and let's constantly add a new letter to the community. That way you're always 15 minutes behind and somebody's always catching you up. Therefore, AKA, I am an SJW and I am leading you forward and painting a narrative I want you to believe. I'm always, they're always, I'm, I'm an SJW. I will always be talking down to you. Always, forever, that's it. Hallelujah, they say. Preach. So here we are today. Let's make new genders. Does anybody give a fuck about new genders? I, I don't know. I I assume, I said this to Anna, that Star Wars girl. Why do you think they really got on the Enterprise? 
And she's like, well, what do you mean? It's duty, it's service, it's whatever. And she quoted some geek shit at me. I was like, no, it was it was alien pussy. That's why they got on that ship. They wanted they wanted that alien potang. But I digress. There was probably alien genders out there. So where are we at today? Let me pull this up. I want to make sure I pull up the right thing. Want, I don't want to rant off the rails here. I do want a rant with a purpose. Where are we at today? What is the Neil Adams of today doing? All right. Well, an SJW, uh, here we go. Uh, here we go, guys. Here, are you ready? Please, I'm a trans woman in Gotham. Please. Of course I have a weapon. What the fuck is going on? The fuck? The fuck is this? Don't pull up the wrong thing. Too late. So this is this is somebody trying to be relevant in comics because the fucking characters aren't selling the books. The creators aren't selling the books. They're saying uh, Catwoman has a dick. I don't know. This is obviously the, an erect bat in a phallic shape around the pelvic area. Do have to bring this up a little bit. What the actual deuce? I literally cared that, um, yeah, character. Yeah, all right. So here's, there is so much wrong with this. And, and I was looking at Twitter and it, it got me going. I was like looking at this. It's like, let me read this guy's tweet. I like how this is supposed to imply that there's like rampant trans attacks, but like everyone in Gotham gets robbed and stabbed every other week. Shouldn't everyone have a weapon at this point? This is a very good fucking point. This is this is fucking Gotham City, all right? Gotham City where, you know, Bruce Wayne's, you know, the Waynes were gunned down in Crime Alley by Joe Chill. Did Joe Chill ask their pronoun before shooting a male and a female in front of a little kid? No, he didn't. He didn't care. Because crime is blind, just like justice should be blind. Crime, like, what? Like, this is the thing. This is fucking SJWs trying to pull some shit like Neil did. Okay? At, 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 at their core, that's what somebody's trying to do. And they're trying to, like, pretend, um, one, that there's trans crimes in Gotham City. You know, all the alleyways in Gotham City. All the Joe Chills in Gotham City, they're gunning for a certain pronoun, right? That's it, right? They weren't they weren't killing the Waynes in front of their kid, you know, creating Batman. They weren't doing any of that. It was all a hate crime. Joe Chill ain't got no chill. That's true. He doesn't. Joe Chill equals Joker, hashtag canon. Why doesn't she have more hidden weapon like a taser or pepper spray? Because uh, a taser or pepper spray isn't a phallic object. If you'll notice, there's a little bit of pink there to tip. Some rings. Obviously, maybe a little ribbing. You know, a little in and out action going. It is an erect silhouette. If I was to take this figure and black it out, you would see what looks like an erection. Just the tip is going in. They're saying it's a baldo. 90% of Gotham is trans and they want B-L-O-O-D. They do. Okay, so here's the thing. When do you take a pop culture icon and try to uh, make it about a minority? And I'm not saying it shouldn't be. Okay, there's a time and place for this. But something like this, and, and this is happening all in comics, and how ridiculous this is, is 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 there more of a victim in Gotham City than the, than the people that live in Gotham City? That's the thing. Nobody wants to live in Gotham City. The only There's only one person you would want to be, two people in Gotham City you want to be. One, the Joker, and two, Batman. Maybe Kid Missioner Gordon. Gotham City, full of, uh, you know, like either crooked cops, Everybody killing you, breaking pearl necklaces. This is what they do in Gotham. They break pearl necklaces in front of kids. Everybody's like, gotta fly. Pop culture is under the control of sociopaths. That is true. So what do you do with this? I mean, like, you laugh at it. 
you cry a little bit, you go, I remember better times when, you know, meritocracy and people, people, the thing about Neil is Neil, Neil, I'm going to go back to Neil for a minute. Th this is why I'm, I'm like, I've been thinking about this. I'm like the better days of the, the American comic book industry, the better days are probably behind us. And I, I'm, and people are going to like, Shane, fuck you, Comicsgate. And I'm like, absolutely, Comicsgate. I, I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you on this. But here's the thing. We got a lot of fucking work to do. We got a lot of work to do. And I, I'm going to go through a couple of points that I've been thinking about lately. And I, I know I haven't been streaming. I've been drawing my book. I get it. Everybody's like, Shane, you're going to come in here. You're going to slam shit around. You're going to preach to us. But bitch, where you been? Where you been on YouTube? I'm like, I've been drawing. I've been drawing. I sold my house. Um, You know, I had a lot of repairs that had to be done to it to sell it. I've just been busy. I still got paperwork to do on that in the next couple of weeks, but it's it's a done deal. You know, I've just been busy, guys. A little bit. So uh, back to Neil. So what, what's happened with the American comic book industry and why we're creatively bankrupt is we gave it to SJWs, okay? And, and when I say we, let's all pretend we are, were all part of the crime. We were buying the Batman books. We were reading the Batman books. We were either working at Marvel and DC. Somehow you were either a creator or a fan, but we were all we were all on station when the SJW invasion happened. People are going to say, there is no SJW invasion. Bull fucking shit. Bullshit. Okay? So one of the places I think that we ended up in this crippling situation, one of the main points that fucked us up, fucked us right in the fucking ass, was we stopped developing and uh, nurturing new talent. Okay? That was one of the things I think we stopped doing. Here we go. Here they come. Here they come. Shane ignores us for months, then pops in to tell us how to live our lives. Well, do what you do. But... When did the comic book industry really stop nurturing new talent? Now, what's interesting about Neil Adams, maybe some of you know and some of you don't, is the artist that came from Neil Adams Continuity Studios. I'm barbecue. F yes, Snarkticon. Shane really just streamed to brag he got barbecue while, while we starve. Yes, I was thinking about eating ribs in front of you guys. So, Bill Sinkevich. Sinkovich correctly, if anybody pronounces his name correctly, it's Sinkovich, came from Continuity uh, Studios. Continuity Studios, for people that don't know, play a little catch up here, was a Neil Adams studio that mainly did commercial art and storyboards and things like that. They eventually did their own line of comic books. I think Bucky O'Hare came out through there, uh, Mr. T and the T-Force. There were some books that, you know, um, Continuity Studios did do, but, uh, a lot of story, a lot of guys came from that studio doing storyboards. Another outside of uh, Bill Sinkovich talent um, was Frank Miller. Now, Frank Miller, uh, Neil Adams put in a phone call um, to Marvel Studios and said, you guys need to look at this guy's, this Miller, this Frank Miller's portfolio. Did Marvel develop Frank Miller? Fuck no. Neil had a hand in on it. Now, um, Frank goes gets his first fill-in on a Spider-Man issue that happens to feature Daredevil. And, uh, you know, um, I don't know. He wasn't the best artist at first. But, you know, he stuck to it and got more and more work. And there's this thing that used to happen. Now, whether it was an apprenticeship or whether it was just like, looking for new talent and nurturing new talent, the American comic book industry, and I, and this is where we're all sort of at fault, in a way, mainly the comic industry, not us as readers, but we stopped nurturing new talent, okay? Nobody was trying, trying to cultivate the next Frank Miller. Nobody was trying to make the new Neil Adams. Um, Marvel and DC sure as shit hasn't invested any money in on new talent. And, and, and when they do, it's usually been overseas, which is not necessarily anything wrong against that, except they're fighting against another economy and that their incentive isn't finding new talent. It's actually, it's really close. Of course, if it's good, that's fine, but they're kind of actually looking for cheap talent. So that's a key point here. 
is looking for new talent across the globe. They actually discover there's other economies where the, the conversion rate works in Marvel and DC's favor. And they end up with like, you know, like what some people called the Brazilian invasion, which would have been likes like Ivan Reese, great comic book artist, uh, you know, things like that, Joe Prado, things like that you can find overseas and pay like a fraction of the price sometimes. Eventually it catches back up, but that's that's the thing. Marvel and DC kind of look for cheap talent. And when they got used to cheap talent, then they're like, well, fuck, have we got some cheap talent in the States? SJWs, right? Am I right, guys? Am I right? They draw like cow's art. They draw like shit. They, they pay, pay them like shit. They draw like shit, pay them like shit. What do you end up? You end up with shit fucking comic, right? You end up with a shit comic with a $4.99 outrageous price tag for a shit fucking comic. And what do you do? Uh, well, how do you make it relevant? Well, you can't sell it because it's drawn well. You, well, let's just put some type of uh, ballsy statement in there about being trans and having a baseball bat and how you are special to Gotham City. Somehow, in this city full of people being mugged every day, being in Gotham City, you probably are just used to crime no matter what color your skin is no matter what sex it is, you're probably just throwing your wallet at the ground. Somebody taps you on somebody says, hey, mister, you just throw your wallet on the ground and stick your hands up. I mean, that's living in Gotham City. Nobody's unrealistic portrayal of a trans woman's body, very transphobic in placing unrealistic body image expectations. Oh my God. People really are uh, pointing out some stuff here. What do they got here? Trans women almost always need to have long hair to keep uh, and conceal large skull. Is that true? Which also makes eye appear smaller. Okay, that's wrong. Requiring heavy eye makeup because uh, testosterone. Oh, that's called high T. Uh, high T. Th this is the post that got me, and and this got me going. Um, all right, obviously. Uh, a body positive black female, Jean Gentry here. The problem with image is with with this image, I think, is that it implies she carries a bat because she fears being attacked because she's trans. In truth, should be attacked because it's Gotham and violence is part of her life. Is that seriously a trans flag bat? Are you are you fucking kidding? Is that the flag for the trans community? Trans flag bat, seriously, what the hell? Western comics, mainly DC and Marvel, are as good as dead. Uh, all right, here's Black Mask. Here's this. So here's Mags. So fuck you, fuck CIS assholes, fuck your bullshit, get ready for a baseball bat to the teeth. Now, this is an old tweet by uh, Mags in 2017. It kind of is funny now. Huh. Is that the trans flag? Now I have to go look this up. You see what happens? You see what happens? Now Shane just learned about a new flag. Let me go look this up. Anyways, Inglorious Rex, if you, don't, if you want to support creative comics, creator-owned comics, in, in actually get part get set root we you're setting root in the new comic era the new this could be a fucking renaissance i feel it coming but that's going to lead us into what i was talking about before we have a lot of hard work ahead of us a lot of hard work but the link for this is down below if you're a mod please pump it out in the chat um and uh I'll leave you guys with a trailer as I have 163 people in here and I'm going to go Google what the trans flag is. Uh. Yeah. 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 Uh. Pardon me in my tone. You can't step to my throne. They ain't working like me. I did this on my own. Asking where we been, I, I don't know where to begin, I, all this dirt on my skin, I just came here to win, I'm more than a man, I'm a monster, somebody called past the doctor, 
I got a six inch for a pasta. So now I'm coming for the whole roster. It's not a game, why you playing with me? You could double back, lose track, try and hang with me. It must be in my veins. Something you can't tame, cause I break the chains. Can't control me. So, uh, she is beating the people with a trans bat. Um, I can't even make this shit up. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, I am at a point where I'm like, we have a lot of... And I mean a lot of hard work ahead of us in the American comic book industry. Um, unlike never has there been a, a deficit in, uh, in the comic book industry like it is right now. So, you know, there's a lot of unrest in the American comic book industry. Like you could cut it with a knife. Is DC better off under discovery? Question mark. Here's what observers are saying. I'm not going to go down through everything in this. But there's a lot of like people like wondering, um, you know, would Discovery basically push a bunch of cash into DC Comics, which they're probably not. People don't usually buy a company to start pumping revenue, you know, uh, money into it. They usually buy a company to merge it together, um, find overlap that they can that, that redundancies and get rid of it. Okay, that that's the thing, right? So, the idea that DC Comics is going to get a cash influx that that they would need to hire talent. Now, this goes back to have we developed new talent? That's the problem. There is not enough young creators that DC Comics or Marvel Comics have actually nurtured over the years that they could they that they could buy out. To, to to do a reboot worth the fuck to get people's attention and it would take a massive reboot and there's a couple of things wrong that the comic industry uh especially dc comics have done one they have went so far into the paint on uh the community and representation and anything like that that if they did try to do a reboot it would be called homophobic so first, there is no type of reboot that DC can do to get fans to come back. And that's the thing. Everybody's sick of reboots. I get it. I don't need another reboot. I'm, I'm actually good. I don't know if I need to buy another DC comic again. I can't bring myself to watch the new Batman movie. I swear to God. I My favorite fucking comic book hero. I can't, And I actually like Robert Patt Pattinson and uh, The Lighthouse, one of my favorite movies. I cannot bring myself to watch that movie. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm kind of done. I'm kind of burned out on superheroes. Nobody's seeing Shane draw a superhero book. SJWs have kind of ruined superheroes for me. I love my comics. I love a good quality comic. I have tons of comics that are superhero based, but I also have tons that aren't. I just love good comics, period. I don't give a shit at what genre it is. So... First, they don't have new talent that they can get for what I would call a medium rate. So that they they cultivated is a bunch of uh, cow arts, shitty, shitty art artists that all kind of look the same, like it all looks the same. And and they can buy that, but that's not going to bring the fans back. That's not going to pull up. That that's not going to pull the comic industry's nose up. It's fucked. It's done. OK, there is a point in time and, and I hate using sports analogies, but this happens, I guess, in like jujitsu and wrestling and, and even Muay Thai clinch, mainly Muay Thai clinch. That there's a point in time when you enter a Muay Thai clinch, you have to keep your head position up. Why? Because once your head gets down, you can't pull your head back up like you literally can't like, uh, you know, a one arm is going to keep the head down. So why do you not want your head down? Because you're going to get kneed in the fucking face. So first off. It's easier just to keep your head up and not get kneed in the face and not worry about it. Okay, now, Paul Levitz used to say, and this is another analogy that probably fits a hell of a lot better than my shitty sports analogy. 
that is easier to maintain than it is to rebuild. And that th that wasn't no fucking bodybuilder. Paul Levitz was a little man, little arms. It wasn't no bodybuilder. Where'd that shit come from? Arnold Schwarzenegger? No, it came from a little guy, little guy that loved some comics that knew it was fucking hard to get fans to come back once you piss in their fucking pocket. When, when a fan buys a comic and he looks down and he's got a pocket full of piss and Mickey Mouse sitting there with his dick in his hand laughing at you, they ain't coming back. The fucking mouse, whether it's Mickey Mouse pissing in one pocket or it's Bugs Bunny in another, they ain't coming back. You have to, you have to let them go, let them drain the urine out of their pocket, and maybe once their pants dry out and they've forgotten about the shitty Batman book, give it a, some time. Have a big Batman reboot and they'll come back. So where's the comic book industry today? Desperately needs that. And chances are Discovery will want something kind of like that without the money. So what are they going to end up probably doing? I think licensing this shit out. Because the, the, you don't understand. The rot that is DC Comics right now, and I'm talking from an editorial standpoint, like, what are they going to do, pump money into the fuckers who drove this into the ground? No. They've kicked them out of a building. These people ain't got a fucking office over their head. Do you think that, do you think Discovery has any confidence in funneling any of their fucking money into the same editorial team that, you know, that, I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, let me just bring it back up. Let me bring this home. Do you think they're going to pump money into the people who made this? The same people that thought this is how you sell a comic. This is how we get people talking on Twitter. And then you're right. You're right. You, it worked. You got people talking on Twitter. But you know what this doesn't do? This doesn't fucking take. Did nobody, nobody that even praises this. They're not going to a comic book shop. They're, they're not going. It's a small demographic. Very small demographic. And and, it, and 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 the American comic book industry is very small. The American comic book industry actually needs to sell to a very broad audience, not cater to a small demographic. That's where we're at right now. And 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 the idea that somebody's going to write an article, I don't know, will discovery will they won't they the, the, you know common fucking sense is don't throw good money behind bad. Now, now they need the IP, obviously. Okay, the research and development. Look, that scooter, that scooter, the wheels have fallen off, and I'll get into it. Let me catch some super chats. I got a uh, Marby dog for five dollars. Shane, there is still a long way to go for Comicsgate, but you might be leading a billion dollar industry in ten years for five dollars. I'm getting to that point. I'm getting to that point. But you have ten years in comic time is a lifetime. I've people have made and law and and lost careers in 10 years time. It's very comic book time is different than than anything else. Like I, it just is. There's always new comics. Um people buy enough of that artist and they keep it and maybe the artist just gives up on comics or they're like comics are too fucking hard or an editor quits hiring them because they make too much. But 10 years is almost a lifetime for some comic book professionals. So Look, in 10 years, what could Comicsgate be? If everybody gets along and everybody comes together, and I'm talking about fans, I'm talking about customers, I'm talking about the community, I'm talking about creators, yes, Comicsgate could be the future of the comic industry, but don't let that, don't, ha we do not need to pat ourselves on the back and say we got this because there's a lot of fucking work to be done. I'm talking, it is time. People have to roll up their fucking sleeves and put in the work. We have to undo everything that's being done in the American comic book industry, but we have to funnel it to us. Now, that's that's the problem, right? A lot of people are like, oh, let me go. And this is my personal opinion, and maybe I'm wrong. But a lot of people are like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make a comic book for the people that the American comic book industry doesn't want to fulfill. And you should. And that's, fuck hell, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But they got us at a disadvantage. And this is my thoughts, and my thoughts only, and this reflects, will reflect on Nine Lives comics. I don't think a superhero comic is, I think there's a lot more work to do in superhero comics that it, than it's worth. 
I, I do think. And I, I, I fear that superheroes need to go away for a while. Okay, the people need to 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 let S just I don't want to tug of war with um pretend like SJWs are like a Rottweiler. And you know, the Rottweiler has his rope, his dog toy, and I'm grabbing it and he's yanking it and my fucking arm shaking out, you know. And then one day, five years go by playing with the Rottweiler, my arm's getting a little bit more yanked out. Why? Because the fucking dog's getting bigger and bigger. And the SJWs are like this swollen fucking tick looking Rottweiler right now. And I got that rope toy and I'm letting the dog really pull. And I'm just like, you know what? This is me. I'm like, fuck it. And the dog just flies backwards. And the dog looks stupid and retarded at me. And he's like, what? We're not tug of warring him? I'm like, nah, fuck it. You can have your fucking dog toy. I don't care anymore. That's my opinion with superheroes right now. I'm, I'm fucking... I don't think we can save it. I really don't. I really don't. Why? Because of Marvel and DC and the corporations, the ESG funds, not exactly the SJWs. The fucking corporations, and I we saw this with Disney, them taking the knee on that real quick when, with the, well, a little bit of pushback, saying that they weren't going to put this propaganda in children's medium at a certain age. And then Disney's like, oh, fuck no, we're sorry, we're sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll do whatever you want. That corporate mindset of uh, bad PR, people that are afraid of bad publicity, that shit fucks superheroes upside down. And Marvel and DC actually own and trade in the uh, term superhero. I, I don't even know if I can use the term superhero. Okay, like they, they share like a trademark in that. No, no bullshit. You can't say superhero on TV without paying both Marvel and DC Comics. And it's fucking, I, and I'm, now is it worth fighting for? Sure. Is it realistic that I'm going to win people onto a superhero book? Even if I did, like Marvel and DC are fucking pouring gas on the dumpster fire of this superhero concept. They're drumming it down to something it's not even meant to be. I mean, right now in the American comic book industry, they think a fucking superhero should have a leather zip-up fucking jacket and pants. Why? Why? Because it's it's real easy to make in, in a TV show. And that's the other thing. That's the other rot of the American comic book industry. Don't blame it just on SJWs. It's actually fucking Hollywood. Hollywood and looking for a return investment on comics. And your return investment is you own the IP and it used to make money. Comic books, believe it or not, and all of this shit, comic books actually used to be a profitable medium. And I'm not talking about the trades. I'm not talking about the digital comics. I'm not talking about the lunch boxes. I'm not talking about the t-shirts. I'm talking about fucking comics 12 months a year sitting on a fucking spinner rack at a drugstore used to be profitable. Why? Because it sold to a broad demographic, whether it was a kid or a 13-year-old or a 22-year-old or a 35-year-old that was hiding that he was buying comics. Like, they were just fucking pure fun. They were also, not, you know, spoiler alert, geared towards action and adventure, which then led them to the demographic of males. Why? Because of things like wrestling because of boxing because we like action adventure and we like dudes with muscles beating the shit out of one another it made fucking sense and because it made sense it made dollars <laughs> all right we got another super chat here master of boobs for two dollars do the people that get hit with a turn track at ends i don't know i don't know it's a good question master boobs that's a good question let me scroll down here i've not been keeping up with the chat i was hung up on that super chat people are probably mad at me berserk has blown my mind yeah see you're finding manga you're finding and this is believe it or not guys i have all this pulled up i have all of this pulled up comics gates time is comics time at march 10 make shane a billionaire the transition let me just catch up for a second i'm sorry guys everybody shane go see the northman was it a good movie everybody's like the bam yes sir shane the great coom level yes sir uh shane rants 10 shane reading one fuck 
Everybody's so mean to me. That's and that and that you gotta take some punches. English motherfucker, do you speak it? All right. Take a moment, Shane. Take a moment. I can't take a moment. We because if I take a moment, I take a movement. I take my moments with my movements when I I mean I take a break when I'm taking a shit. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so where are we at today? We're we're here. We're at at, at a point where the fort I think the forest is burned down, guys. That's the good news. Believe it or not, the fucking forest fire, all the woodland creatures are running out. The fucking forest is down. It's almost like we're the firefighters trying to drop barrels of water and helicopters over the forest fire in like fucking California or Canada, whatever. Doesn't matter. And 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 I'm I'm like the guy I hit the lever, the tank opens up, the water falls down, and there's a fucking dude in there. He was swimming and I scooped him up with the water and I hope nobody caught that shit on camera. I didn't know he was swimming when I went and filled that tank up with water. That guy R.I.P. that guy. But still, the good part about a forest burning down is that it can grow again, right? So here we are in Comics Gate. We have some of the best, some of the brightest. We got EVS. We got a John Malin. We got a Graham Nolan. Graham Nolan, creator of Bane. Creator of fucking Bane. Here, right here, guys. Right here, doing books, books called Two Fisted Manly Tales. Marvel and DC can't print that. It'll offend somebody. Are you fucking crazy? Two Fist Manly Tales? Well, how are we going to sell that to women? Fuck the women. That's not all. I mean, literally, fuck the women. But here's the thing women do buy cold comics. There are women here. A Danger Vanessa in the chat. They buy the Roca Force. The Kenneth Roka Fort's here. We got Groken 2 coming up. What are you going to do? You're going to buy some cool comics. You're going to read some good comics. And that's our future. But, you know, here's the thing. The Great Wall of China, it wasn't built overnight. They had years before the Mongolians were coming. And that Great Wall, that wall was built brick by brick. And here we are. That's the long road of Comics Gate. We have a great big wall because the SJWs, they're leaving, but they're going to come back. They're going to come back 10 times fold, probably. They're running. Uh, they then they don't fuck their, They run in with Spider Man, like head on a spike, fucking Batman crippled. They're dragging him by horses. All our, all our, all our heroes, they tried to cancel Frank Miller, all of this shit. And they're like, we'll be back. Well, Comics Gate is that wall. And we got to build it brick by brick, campaign by campaign, book by book. And I'm not talking about just throw a book at the wall and be like, fuck it, I made a book. No, this has to be the best fucking work of our life. It has to. Because we're fighting for the fucking life of comics. Believe it or not, I'm not trying to make Comics Gate out to be something it's not. I, I mean, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be the guy standing around saying Comics Gate is all of this, it's all of that. I'm not that guy, but I am that guy. It's Comics Gate is is believe it or not, if you are a customer, more so if you're a customer, believe, believe it or not, it takes customers first to make this thing work. This the, to, you are the gas in the tank of this creative vessel that is Comics Gate. Everybody, if you see yourself in the chat, I applaud you. Thank you for being here. Please hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Ring the bell, if you will. But it's very important that you're a big part of this. Why? Because I can make a comic book, but if nobody's buying it, if nobody's reading it, did that comic book even exist? The answer is no. That That's the truth. So first off, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being part of the community. Thank you for backing these campaigns. Thank you for your leap of faith when you purchase a book on Indiegogo. It is my intention to give you the best fucking comic book I can in my lifetime. That's it. If I can, if I can produce the, the, if I could take everything I've ever learned about comics, if I can take everything I've ever learned about page layout, 
every every mistake I've ever made on a comic book page on a deadline or with an inker or with a color, something that went wrong. And I can learn from that fucking mistake and I can make a crowdfunded book and try to make the best fucking thing, the best fucking product that I can I can possibly manifest. And then that's not it. I don't just make it. I don't. I don't stop there. I go order me some Gemini mailers. I get me some bags and boards. I sign them for you. And then I put them in the mail. And then I, I'm that is this wall brick by brick. Okay. Every campaign I can give you to the best of my ability, I feel is my contribution to the American comic book industry. And that's the most I can do. I can go out there and I back books and I support books. And I especially books that I feel like have promise that I feel like that, that, that especially meritocracy, but also that there's new talent that's thriving and developing and they need to be nurtured. Okay. Now I'm not here to sell you any type of bullshit. I wouldn't do that. I'm not sitting here telling you to go buy this Batgirl book with a fucking trans flag baseball bat upside your head, which is obviously an homage to the great mags. Not doing that. I wouldn't do that. Wouldn't sell you this shit. I would it. I would say, you know, if you haven't, do consider being a, a backer that helps gets Inglorious Rex to two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. There are extra pages drawn in this campaign, and they will be made available. They will be made available once we unlock the two hundred and sixty mark. Now. If we don't hit that, those pages, uh, I hate to say, they will be cut from the book. They will be lost in time. Uh, Zade Comics says, Shane nurtures me. Um, that's why I thank him. That You're welcome. You're welcome, um, Phil. You're welcome. So is DC better off with Discovery? Um, this is a lot of denial happening right now in the American comic book industry. A lot of like, will Discovery think we're important? Do we have to sing and dance for our supper? And... And I think at the end of it, and I think, you know, once people actually evaluate DC Comics and what they're doing, it's just going to be easier to go with somebody else. And, and that's the thing. Because they can't just, we haven't developed new talent. So y'all, at best, you have okay talent at a medium price that are all sitting around, you know, looking for work. And some of those guys are aging out. I mean, some of those guys are, you know, they they they're they were around when pencils down came. They know what what why would I work for Marvel or DC Comics? At the same time, there's there's people they're getting their Moon Knight costumes ripped off from the books that were only maybe five, ten years old. Like they're seeing this shit. They're like, well, what the fuck am I doing working for Marvel and DC? Am I gonna be in a Thor trailer and not paid? Am I gonna be in a whatever trailer and not paid? I mean, me, myself, there was some uh, artwork of mine being thrown on some uh, Blackest Night figures, you know, for an Atrocitus Builder figure and stuff. And it's like, I should I have done that? Should, should, should I have drawn that piece of artwork? Sure, it was a work for hire thing. When they start, like, pulling, like, Bleez or Dexter or something like that, I'm really going to have to look myself in the mirror and be like, I made a fucking mistake giving anything to these companies creatively. I mean, the, the company themselves are creatively bankrupt. Me as a, you know, somebody just said design a, a new character over here. And I gave them a cool character because I, I wanted to be, look cool. I wanted my artwork to look cool. And in the end, it's like, yeah, but only thing I ended up doing is getting fucked over by a big corporation. So th there's enough of this salt out there right now that the, the comic book pros that do exist, do realize Marvel and DC, they don't got their back when, when, when. When, you know, the fucking shit gets real, when the supply chain's messed up or Diamond shuts down, Marvel Marvel Studios isn't like, God, oh, fuck it. You know, let's uh, keep these comic book pros fed until we get, you know, the, the doors back open. They didn't do that. They told them, like, uh, you know, pencils down. Yeah, it's cold outside. They didn't even tell them to wrap up in a fucking blanket. It's like pencils down. We'll see what happens, guys. And then you go, but 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 you asked me to work for twelve months straight with no water. What are you doing, telling me pencils down? 
they're like, yeah, but you're a freelancer. You know, you, you ran the risk of being a freelancer. It's like, yeah, but I, I made like a, a modest living at best. At my hardest, with no sunlight, I maybe had a, a mediocre, modest living. I basically was able to, to pay for a two-bedroom apartment, sir, with no sunlight, missing birthdays. They're like, yeah, but see, you fucked up because you were a freelancer. We really don't owe you anything. And and wait, I spent 30 years of my life working for a comic industry that I loved. I was a comic book fan. I wanted to contribute. And that brings me up to the point. I got into comics wanting to leave comics better than I left them. I mean, wait. Leaving comics better than I entered them. Sorry. Fumbled. 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 Shane needs a soda. So what happens? Who thinks that anymore? Not the SJWs. They think comics have to, they want to leave comics with right thing. Not the quality of comics, not the entertainment anymore. It needs to be lecturing pamphlets. It needs to be an update on, on what, what new letters we've added to the community. That's what Batgirl is about. That's what Batman's about. That is what Gotham City is about. It's about phobias, right? It's not about crooked cops. It's not about orphans wanting to fight crime because their parents were gunned down in front of them in an alleyway by Joe Chill. It's not about any of that anymore. That's that's what old people like, Shane. You're old. You're you're like not you're not part of the you're not in line anymore. You're not part of the right thing. Lecturing and fan fiction, these two things shouldn't go together. Isn't that weird, though, that most of the comics today are fan fiction? Like, the, how, when did fan fiction become, like, why? That So the other thing about the Discovery thing I, I want to point out before I, I forget this point is, so that, there's this concept that maybe Discovery is going to come in and invest in DC Comics because of this this excuse that's been holding the American comic book industry together like fucking spit and duct tape. Well, we're research and development. They can't get rid of us. I heard this from Dan Didio. I heard uh, this from um, uh, uh, Bob Wayne. I've heard this from uh, a lot of people in the American comic book industry, uh, especially when the AT&T murder there, the guys in sales, Fletcher who ran the conventions. Everybody thought when that merger was happening with AT&T, No, we're all getting promotions. Things will be better because they don't care about comics. They just care about the intellectual properties. And we're making intellectual properties. So what does DC Comics do? They go crack out the Hanna-Barbera characters. They do a bunch of one-shots with them to try to fluff the books and look like they have more intellectual properties than people really want to buy, which was the case. They want to remind their new corporate overlords that, hey, we have the Flintstones. We have, you know, we have Top Cat. We have the Hanna-Barbera Looney Tunes. We have whatever, right? So where is this at today, okay, with this new company coming in? Do they do they creatively sink into DC Comics? And there's this idea that they're, they service this, that, that they have to be there. The truth is they don't because they have – this is the, the zinger to this whole concept that we're research and development is you already did the, uh, the, the wokest of woke shit in about – Less than a year, 90% of DC Comics characters have become bi or gay, okay? If they haven't, if I'm wrong on that percentage, whatever, I don't even care. It seems like that. The point is, is the, is yeah, by Superman, by Robin. Believe it or not, Robin is a household name character to a lot of people. Batman and Robin, Superman, Batman and Robin, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, whatever. Uh, we had the Aqualad, all of that. So they don't even need to do any more of this radical left shit. They already have it. They already know the take. They have the playbook. It's already there. Are you just going to do the same playbook on another character? Sure. It's it's about as relevant as sticking a a symbol on a chest right now at DC Comics. It's like, yeah, Superman, trade out the S for, I don't know, an A, and you have Captain Atom, whatever. So... Do they need to do comics to get more woke comics? No, they already they already ran that experiment. They can't go backwards, but they also don't need to go backwards. The first, they can't go backwards because it'll be called phobic. Two, they don't need to go backwards because guess what? 
They own those comics. All those comics are there. They exist. They're not going anywhere. They're on my fucking shelf. They're on a fucking digital server right now where you can go buy them digitally. Those comics never cease to exist. So this idea that we're going to go back to DC Comics and it's going to go back to the heyday or it's going to go be evergreen or whatever. They're going to go back to the classic core uh, relaunch reboot. Sure, it's possible. Sure, it could make money hypothetically. But is there a a real like le- like incentive? No, because comics really don't make money right now. They're, the, the, and this goes back to the point of leverage thing. The comic industry sales are so low, it would take so much capital to bring it back to just a fraction of what it used to be. And the, it, it's just not even worth it anymore. Those comics are there. The, the, when I said at the beginning of this stream, the comics in the past look brighter than the ones ahead of us in the American comic book industry, that's what I mean. There's no reason for DC Comics to try to rekindle something that they've already done years ago. Because that shit, it, it's not, it, it, it's never stopped existing. Now, this is the real death knell to the whole American comic book industry. And this is what I think. And I could be fucking wrong. Nobody, I'm not here on my channel saying I'm the absolute know all of this shit. Relax, Shane, potato, whatever. It ain't that serious. It is that serious, Lord Nemesis. We're talking comics. Here's the thing, and all of this, going forward with woke shit is actually probably damaging the intellectual property that they bought, okay? The uh, bisexual Superman didn't work out too great. Sells down in the gutter. There's probably people getting Superman tattoos removed from their arms as we speak. You know, people are knocking the fucking, you know, Superman S shields off their fucking trucks, you know, off the, you know, the hood ornaments. So do you go more woke in the future? No, because you could be crippling the intellectual property. Every new comic you're making hypothetically to the new owners could destroy the brand. It really could. So then what are they left doing? Fucking around with B-list characters like Batgirl and other things, uh, adding new characters, sure. But at the cost of what? Of uh, at some point in time, the return on comic books and the crippling nature of the SJW comic has driven the American comic book sales down to a, a fucking point where it's actually going to cost the corporations money just to keep this shit going. And that is problematic. That is problematic. Now, there are examples of uh, nobody gives a fuck about Marvel and DC anymore. Let me walk you through them. These are the uh, these are some of the uh, top. What is this? Uh, market March twenty twenty two book scans top twenty adult graphic novels. Now, graphic novel used to mean graphic novel, and it used to be called manga, and then came YA. And then one day, SJWs wanted to pretend we, they did better one year than any year ever, and they said, uh, YA are comics, you fucking retard. And I'm like, N- the fuck? You weren't ever calling them comics before. That's why they're called YA. You didn't consider them. Well, no, you're old and we're considering them. Okay. I said, fucking fine. Fucking fine. Dogman's doing great. And that's going to save the American comic book industry. And you're like, yep. I'm like, I'll just let you have this W. I'm not going to argue anymore. And now what we're going to see is this is ICB2 top 20 adult graphic novels. Now, now we used to also have another term for something called manga. And this list is all... I'm pretty sure everything's manga. Let me just go down through it. My Hero Academia, Volume 30. Demon Slayer, Volume 1. Demon Slayer, some knockoff, I'm sure. Chainsaw Man, Chainsaw Man, My Hero Academia. Toilet toilet Bound. Hanaku Kun. Now this, Volume number fucking zero. Yen Press. Everything about this is fucking manga, okay? I don't even know what it is. This is a fucking book named Toilet Bound, and it's on the fucking top 10. I remember the new 52, the weekly 52 series, all four issues hitting the top 10 right out the gate. 
you know, and of course that that wasn't graphic novels, but I mean, I mean, even in the graphic novels, when those trades would would come up, they were making the top twenty. So we got uh, Chainsaw Man, we got Berserk, Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer, Jujitsu, uh, Demon Slayer, Chainsaw Man, Spy X Family Volume One. Again, this media, I'm assuming it's manga. Uh, Kai, Kaiju Number Eight Volume One. I actually, I actually saw this book. I, I skimmed through it. Did not like it. Berserk Deluxe Volume Ten Hardcover. Dark Horse Comics made it. Now, Dark Horse Comics didn't make it on here. By printing a fucking manga. Okay, so 19 slots here are... No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 18 slots are Viz Media and Yen Media. And two slots are Dark Horse for printing Berserk. Okay. This is where we're at today. Uh, the, 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 the Discovery can't sink a fucking dollar into DC Comics. They can't. They can only license it out. That's the point, Sam Spade. You're like, where are you going with this? If you are discovering and you just bought DC Comics, which you only really bought, you wanted to own Superman. You wanted to own Batman. Now, the comic industry kind of comes along with that because that's where all your new trademark and copyrights and your renewing and all of that shit. So you get here and somebody slams this thing on your desk. What do you do? Do you sink money into this company that can't even make this list? Or do you license it out and, and stop investing? And this is the real reality that some dude is sitting. At, he's sitting at his desk and somebody printed this shit out and it hit it, it, you know, and it's a little memo, whatever. And he has to make a decision. That's the point. This is the American comic book industry now. Now, what's all this got to do with Comicsgate? What has this got to do with the price of rice in China, Shane? You say it's simple. Fuck this shit. Fuck Marvel. Fuck DC. Period. Fuck them. Fuck them with a knife. Because you invested your dollars, you invested your time, you invested your imagination. You invested in Batman. You invested in Superman. You are a fan. You are a shareholder, so to speak, in these characters. And in the end, they give no, two fucks about you. They don't care if you hang around. They're willing to sell your ass down the fucking river to find a new fan because somebody added a new letter to a string of a uh, hashtag. And they're more important than you. And, uh, you know... What do you, I, I'm saying invest in comics gate and go find a fucking creator out there. Go find somebody out there that you believe in that, that, you know, they're not some evil corporation. Go back their campaign back at once, back at twice, back at three times, because chances are you're going to have one of the smaller print runs in a comic. You know, only you'll be able to sell whatever extra copies you have for a flip Two, you you're supporting, you are supporting Creators that are trying to rebuild an industry. They're trying to invest. Like, look, I'm not on YouTube right now for Super Chats. I'm not on YouTube right now. I'm out, I'm out, I, 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 I need to be drawing pages right now. I'm on YouTube right now because I'm, I have a fucking fire in my belly. Because I feel like somebody has to talk to you. Somebody has to say, guys, we can build a new tomorrow. That's it. This shit... Marvel DC, it's fucking done. It's fucking done. It's over. You know, it's in hospice. There's no coming out of it. It's over. The Neil Adams thing kind of shook me because I was like, huh, I wonder what the new Neil Adams is going to do. That new Neil, who is the new Neil Adams? If there is a new Neil Adams, if there is a new Frank Miller, if there is whatever, they're going to be in crowdfunding. They're going to be wherever. Okay, they're going to be here where you're at right now they're going to be hopefully on this channel they're going to be on ebs's channel they're going to be on john malin's channel they're going to the new creators the new fucking hope the new the new fucking march forward in 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 keeping a fucking art form alive i went through i went through most of my life being with comics being criticized of not being real art of not being like anything worth acknowledging of being a joke to them one day 
every fucking SJW acting like it's a fucking soapbox to spout politics off of, and it is an art form, to watch it be crippled by a bunch of fucking leftist fanatics. And the only thing I can say is it's a fucking, it's, comics are art, but comics are commercial art. The, the difference between art and commercial art is if I'm an artist and I do a painting, it's about my feelings. And I put it up on the wall and if people look at it, they see my inner feelings and like, oh, that's Widow Shane. And that's what Widow Shane thinks. And that's what's important to him. And uh, I don't expect to make money from it. I just want somebody to see, you know, my inside, my little potato inside. They see it on that canvas and they understand everything. And then maybe they, they say, well, how much for your feelings on that canvas? I'm like, I'm an artist. It's not money. And I'm like, $100,000. They give me $100,000 maybe. I don't know. Whatever. And maybe I made money off of fucking my, my soul poured out on the canvas. Whatever. That's an artist. Commercial artist makes a comic book that is supposed to be entertaining, filled with great artwork, but it's there and printed in multitude for the purpose of people reaching in their pocket, pulling out paper, which is called money, which is not a bad thing. People that like comics aren't making money in comics is bad, Shane. It's not. And I'll tell you why. People reach in their pocket and they grab paper and they go, I'm going to give you this paper for that paper that you made. And I'm like, paper for paper. So a comic is a commercial medium that's supposed to sell to as many people as humanly possible. I, I want the biggest net I can cast as far as a comic book goes. Now, obviously, there are categories, you know, just like in movies and anything else. There is like action adventure, you know, like, you know, like Inglorious Rex. And there's like uh, comics for kids and adults, meaning everyone, which would be like Starlight Cats or something. And, and I make these books to sell to a wide demographic, some wider than others. But, you know, I'm making sure my properties don't like, you know, they're not like cannibalized by everybody. So they're direct to certain ideas and demographics or whatever. But I want to sell as much as I can. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm keeping a little bit of myself out of it. Why? because I want it to be entertaining. And, and I don't think people, and this is the plague of the SJW, and this is the worst part of the SJW. The SJW thinks you give a fuck about them. And uh, you give a fuck about what they think, about what they eat, about who they fuck, who they want to fuck. You don't give a fuck about that. You give a fuck about the fucking book that you want to read and you want to forget your fucking life for the fucking 10, 30 minutes, whatever it takes you to read a comic book. And, and you don't want to think about them. You don't want to know them, okay? You, 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 I mean, maybe if the book is about them, but this is the fucking thing that's really been fucked up in the American comic book industry right now is there are there is this fucking SJW mindset that this shit overlaps, that somehow commercial art is now about feelings and purpose and about leftist agendas and about... T putting ideas in people's head and the, the fucking i mean the only idea that should be put in somebody's head on a comic book is is the hero going to make it this issue from the villain and i have to buy the next issue to find out i mean that that's really the only thing that you should that when i buy a comic that's all i want that's all i expect you know i'm not i'm not really wanting the fucking news on like I, I, I mean, and 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 then that leads me to, okay, I want fucking quality artwork. What's wrong with that? Well, you know that's mainstream. Like all these fucking things that they were all set root. I remember these fucks talking shit about Michael Turner upside and down. Every fucking Michael Turner cover came out. These limp-wristed fucks hitting the keyboard. Da, 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 da. Fuck you, Michael Turner. That's so 90. That, 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 that. You know, all those two-faced fucks. And I'm going to tell you why they're two-faced. The second he died. The second he died. Me and Riddle with cancer the whole time. They're talking shit. That's that, that, so 90. That, 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 90. He dies. Oh, my God, Michael Turner. It's like, you motherfucker, you were talking shit about him five minutes ago and how he, there's a Michael Turner cover on every fucking book. But the shit was selling. 
Because why? It looked good. That's it. It looked good. There was nothing wrong with that. The man didn't do anything wrong. He drew something. It fucking looked good. He drew something. It looked great. He's fucking sick. You were talking shit the whole fucking time. We do not have another Michael Turner to save the American comic book industry right now. We just fucking don't. And that's where it's like it's over. It's done. It's over. I, we're going to see creator after creator die out. And we're not going to see a better creator in their place. If that's the fucking thing about comics is it's a bunch of fucking techniques. It's techniques where I can look at a comic and I'm I'm doing it now with Inglorious Rex. I'm flipping through all these great masterworks. And I'm like, how am I going to lay out this page? Oh, my God. Steve Dicko did these awesome nine panel grids over here. Oh, my God. Frank Quitely did these awesome panels over here. Oh, my God. Joe Kubert did these great enemy ace like inset panels and how he used them and how how like it worked really well with the rest of the book. And I'm like, how can I incorporate all these fucking techniques of all these brilliant men that came before me that they fucked in, hunched their backs over a fucking table, sweat, developed, trial and error. I can learn from all of their trial and error. And I can just, I can just learn. I can learn from their mistakes. I can learn from their accomplishments and I can build off that. There is a foundation of shit that has been laid in the American comic book industry that nobody can build off of. And we can't come back from it without being considered an ist or a phobe. And there is no corporate owner that is going to come around, whether it's Discovery or Discovery sells it to somebody else that's going to bite that fucking bullet and be called an ist or a phobe to their shareholders. It's over. There is no walking this back. It's done. Mandy Summers for $5. Some people say I remind them of a young John Malin, but with eyebrows humbled. Well, you know, you got tits too. I mean, don't forget that. Yeah, I would say you're more like a John Malin with tits. Let me catch up with the chat. We got a Matt. Thornton for $2. Peace be with Michael Turner. Hail for $2. Michael Turner was great. Yanzi is like, what the fuck is going on in there? She probably is. Shane's mad. I'm not mad. I'm just, I've been thinking after Neil Adams passed, I've been really thinking about the American comic book industry and the lack of investment or development of any rising... What, who's a fucking rising star right now in the American comic book industry? Somebody come in here and fucking tell me who is that rising star right now? The rising star. The savior. Is it Sean Gordon Murphy? Is that who's going to save us? SGM? Is he coming in hard on this? Is he going to save the American comic book industry? And, dude, the American comic book industry doesn't need the best drawing Batman right now. They need you drawing anything but Batman. Okay? Like, that's... that's the, You take the top talent in the American comic book industry, you put them on Batman. You might as well fucking start hanging a noose for the American comic book industry to these corporate overlords. They don't need Batman. That's the only fucking thing selling right now. That was actually one thing that the... The Discovery guy right off the bat said we need to invest in other things other than Batman because that's all right. You know, we don't need we don't need to we need to worry about Joker. We need to worry about fucking, you know, we need to worry about Superman. We need to basically work. Oh, Z Z Z Zardowski, Chip Zardowski. He's going to save us. Zardowski's going to save us. You know what? I don't need somebody to come around and save us. The, fuck that. I'll save my fucking self. And that's what Comics Gate, right now, if you're a comic creator and you're watching this video, fucking save yourself. Fucking be part of a movement that is a customer movement set out to make customers happy. That's it. You know, people just want an entertaining escapist type fucking comic book. Nobody ever bought a fucking comic book saying, I want, I, I you know, I, I wanted a fucking live action movie. No, no, no. You wanted a comic book. You, you, the theater's over there. This is a spinner wrap. Okay. This idea that comics are something else than a fucking comic is also invited all these fucks in here that fucked everything up. 
How many of these fucking SJWs do you think they're coming in here trying to say the creepiest, cringiest, outrage, like clickbait, like I'm the deep people of a transgender bat. Everybody look at me. I'm trending right now. They're just looking for a fucking a fucking TV show. We saw that with Mags and Vagrant Queens. A lot of these people, they're fucking tourists. They don't give a fuck about comics. I mean, I don't. I mean, I rarely ever do you see these people with a fucking rack of comics behind them, or trades or whatever. I got fucking bookshelves. I I can't even unpack all my fucking comics. I still have some in storage. Half these fucks came in with hashtags, virtue signaling, identity politics, fucking hijacked the comic book industry because they want a fucking one way ticket to Hollywood. They want a TV show. Fucking fucking. Kwanzer. Ha ha. Yeah, you made more than me on a crowdfunder, but you're not going to get a TV deal. He fucking said that to me. He said that to me. He said it to Yonzi. Yeah, maybe maybe more people buy your books than mine, but I'm the one with the Hollywood deal. Ha 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 ha. It's like, the fuck, dude? What what, what the fuck? It's, uh, why, why would I go to comics for a Hollywood deal? I would just go to Hollywood if I wanted a Hollywood deal. Why? That's like, that's like fucking going into a bank wanting a burrito. What the fuck are you doing? Like, I mean, why? I mean, what type of backdoor, aroundabout way are you trying to get into Hollywood? I mean, why don't you just tell everybody you never cared about fucking comics? At best, you care about the intellectual property. And don't think that pop culture isn't a double-edged sword that everybody loves Captain America all of a sudden. That fucking thing swung back at us real quick, didn't it? Now, what if Captain America was Falcon? Now, what if, what if, what if, what if Captain America was Hydra? Like, dude, no, I, you know what I like? You know when comics were the best? Probably like 1988 when nobody walking up and down the street gave a shit or knew who Captain America was. What, about the time of Secret Wars, when comic book fans, it was an all-time high for us, but everybody else just was, they were getting, I, you know, if the American comic book industry could go back to getting us getting stuffed in lockers and getting wedgies back in school, it'd be, we'd be a lot better, but we can't because we're publicly getting wedgies from SJWs and we're publicly getting slammed in lockers and, and the companies are going along with it. The fucking, the principal we're getting slammed in fucking lockers by SJWs. And we're like, the principal was walking by, and you're like, was well, he going to do something? And, and that's that's Marvel and DC right now. And they're like, or Marvel and Warner Brothers, and they're like, well, I can't do anything because uh, the bully will call me a phobe and, and we're just getting stuffed in fucking lockers by SJWs. And th that's, the, that's the fucking metaphorically where we're at in the American comic book industry. And all I can say is thank God technology caught up and we can do crowdfunding books right now that we're able to do indiegogos that you can sit down maybe maybe comics gate if there's a will there's a way you know we come together as a community you know we get out there we support some campaigns you know we make some dreams come true not for shane davis though at 259 716 still what we got we got zay comics I hear some people calling me a young Brian Houghton. Brian Houghton? I, I don't know who that is. Mags. We grab an or in a row. Don't grab an or. Grab a couple. People in the chat are debating. Shane threw out the oars and went V8 inboard motor. Hell, chat. Shane has to work on his SJW voice. Eh. Everybody's yelling at me to wrench Dale. Super chat. I read the super chat. Dale. I'll send the link out to some people. Let me uh, play a trailer and eat up some time. Here we go. Hell, CG. The new comic book in Glorious Rex will be the next big holla here.
to show the whole world who I am. Boom, boom, boom. Major look, huh? Yeah, this one is for the books. All these chances I took still. I move straight on these rooks now. Hold me up or hold me down, huh? Have my back or hold my crown. Either you with me or not. But you better give all you got, cause I break the chain. Can't control me. Dave, why are you so fired up tonight? Look at you. <laughs> I came in hard as fuck on this you stream. You did. Holy shit. I was like, I'm bringing the fire into the bed with Yanzi or I'm in, in this chat. Mm. Well, you done it. You done did it. Yeah. Do you feel better it. now that you let all that out? A little bit. Yeah? Oh, just a little. Just a little. You said in the chat, I was like, I got to send this girl the link. Mm -hmm. You said people are calling Mandy Summers the next John Malin, but with eyebrows. I said, no, you are the next John Malin with tits look at there and looky there yeah how convenient how convenient yeah, well you know some would call it uh you know maybe it's john's handicap you know if john mm -hmm. malin had tits would he be a better john malin i think so i think yeah. he would i think he's he's really missing out on something by not having them right yeah, it's kind of weird how the chat just starts calling people things that then people say, I hear people are saying this, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not drinking cough syrup. That's fireball, boy. I ain't cough syrup. <laughs> Mandy coming in with fireball. Uh, well, I drank all my, I had drinks. I was on a stream right before this. What and I stream were you on? I was on with Mary Mayhem and we were playing a drinking game. I drank a lot, like a lot. And now I'm now I'm into the fireball. Now I'm fireballing up. See that's all wanker John. Okay, I fixed that. Now they're like Shane is going to fall asleep. I'm not going to fall asleep. Is that what um, you do? Do you kill and then pass out? Michael, somebody said this right one time, and I feel bad. I can't remember. Michael Dietrich. Dietrich. That's diet she. Diet she. I don't. Michael diet she for two dollars. Rage Boner Shane is the best Shane. Some people would say that. That's but interesting. They, oh, I'm looking fire engine, rowboat. Um, everybody, everybody's whatever. Uh, but <laughs> everybody is whatever. Mandy Summers, Jim Shock, Volume One. Yes. Um, up and funding. It is. It is. I got a new cover. I'm gonna be adding here soon. What? Yeah, the one I showed last night. Are you really adding that to the campaign? Yeah, for the closeout, yeah. Or for not the going before, into man. Not before John, right? Uh, well, yeah. I got tits. Oh. Yeah. 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 What you what you what are you gonna do? You know, you know. But yeah, no, I'm gonna add it to the campaign. Oh my god, it's gonna be fire. I've it seen is. it, I've seen pencils of it. It's uh amazing. You, you, it did is. you post that on Twitter? I did. I did. Mm. I posted it on Twitter. Oh my God. Of course. Uh, we got Paul Og. Og for $4.99. What I say is that if a man oh, it ran away. If a man really likes potatoes, he must be pretty decent sort of fella. That's true. Mm. I That's uh reasonable. like look. Irish people like potatoes. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. They didn't have much else.